QuickBooks Online 2023 e-commerce Amazon sales manual journal entry method. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below opening some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click in the tab up top once again to duplicate once again back to the tab to the middle down to the reports on the left hand side opening up the balance sheet once again tab into the right reports on the left and this time we want the p to the l the profit to the loss the income statement closing up the hamburger and changing that ranging from going from this time let's go from 090125 to 09325 and so i don't have anything in there thus far that's what we're looking for because we're going to add stuff for the amazon sales tab into the middle closing the hamburger again range the same 090125 uh, to 09325 run it to refresh it and then we're going to tab to the left and we've been working on e-commerce situations where we're selling inventory but not on the ground support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it not in a store but rather online in the cloud with the help and use of third-party platforms for example a shopify or an amazon in prior presentations we've been focusing more on the shopify now we're taking a look more at an amazon type situation noting that no matter what the third party platform the general concepts the overarching concept is in essence the same we could use different methods to pull that information in from the third party platform into our system either with the use of just bank feeds or we might have a manual entry system pulling information from the third party platform and bank feeds or we could use the qbo commerce which we'll talk about later or like a third party app that's going to help to pull in that information right now we're focused on the manual entry method and more on an amazon based situation because some of the line items might be a little bit more or different or more detailed uh, and then but this method is not just for the manual method in concept because when we think about applications such as the qbo commerce and some of the third party applications they're going to pull in the information in a similar way they're just going to kind of do it in an automated fashion so we're still going to need to know some concepts like clearing accounts when we do some of those integrations that we'll talk about in future presentations in a prior presentation we worked a practice problem in excel where we imagined we're pulling information from amazon because we're having sales that are taking place on amazon we're looking at the deposits or payments that are going from amazon to us which happens about every two weeks and we're looking to break out the detail of all the activity that's happening on amazon's side before they send out that deposit that's the general concept similar concept to what we would do in a shopify situation however we might have different line items when you're thinking about an amazon situation possibly more line items depending on your circumstances than you might have in a shopify type situation so then we can think of of doing our accounting in quickbooks a couple different ways the easiest way is to say i'm going to ignore all this other stuff that breaks out from the deposit and just wait till it hits the bank feeds and then record it as basically income when it hits the bank feeds or we could try to get more detail entering a journal entry which is still going to get to the same deposit amount 
but we'll break out all of this detail so we have it in our uh, finances. And of course, the second method is similar to what other uh, integrations are trying to do, including the QuickBooks basically integration. It's not pulling in every transaction. We're summarizing the transaction and then trying to pull them into our QuickBooks so we have more detailed financial statements, although we're not pulling in, for example, every customer or tracking every unit of inventory on a perpetual inventory based system. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to, to get this practice problem going is I wanna once again upload some bank feed data so we can see the bank feed come through. So I'm gonna do this two times. We're gonna do it two different ways. So I'm gonna put the date, the amount, the bank memo, and then <clears throat> I'm gonna have one in August and one in September for that amount that's gonna go into our bank account, the 391.88. And so once we have this, I'm gonna save it as a CSV file as we've done in the past. So I'll do it fairly quickly, hitting the drop down, save as, and we're gonna save it as, uh, I'll hit the drop down here, a CSV. So it's not gonna be uh, an Excel file, but a CSV, and I'm gonna make it bank feeds number three. So we'll say, okay boom and then if i look at it in my folder here we've got the bank feeds number three right there opening it back up just to check it that's the one let's pull that into our quickbooks so we're going to go into the banking and i'm going to go into the links up top but i'm going to upload upload from a file okay and then we'll select where we want to be pulling this information from. So let's see if I can find it. I'm going to copy the URL here. Copy the URL, paste it. And bank feed number three. And we'll just pull that in as we've done in the past. This is going into the checking account. Just like if it was connected to the bank feeds. And yes, uh, column, one column. My voice is going M M D D Y Y Y Y, and then date to date description goes to the bank memo field amount to amount. That is it. Let's go. Okay. There's the two I want to pull in. I'm going to select all of them. Boom and continue. Save it. Okay. Import complete done. Mui B to the end. So if I go onto the checking account, We've got those two amounts are, are pulling in in our practice data in the bank feeds. So now if we if we looked at our first method, we can say, well, I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna see it hit the bank feeds and then I'm just gonna record it as Amazon sales at that point. So what would be the easiest thing to do? We could say, I'll just wait till it hits the bank feeds like this one and I will just put it into directly Amazon sales. Now I should have changed the, the memo to be Amazon. This would probably, the memo would probably say like Amazon on the bank feed memo or something. So let's do that. I'll put in the Amazon tab, Amazon, boom. And then I'm gonna put it into a sales like Amazon sales or something like that. So do I have an Amazon, Amazon? I'll just say sales, Amazon, and I'll make a new one boom and we'll just call it an income account income and it's going to be sales amazon i'll put it into other primary income save it and that's it i could even make a rule for it to come in automatically and just say okay and then if i check it out on my checking it's going to be going into the checking account and we see that here so that that's not it. Oh, I got to go back a month. Hold on a second. Exit. Let's go from 080125 to 0832530. And then run it. And so there we've got our deposit. Boom. And then going back up, the other side's going exit. The, to the income statement, changing the date again to 080125 uh, to 08325 and run it. And so there is our sales. 
Now remember that one of the obstacles you have with this is that you you are if you get a 1099 it might be for the gross sales amount and Amazon could have taken a substantial amount out and if you report your sales line on your schedule C if you're a sole proprietor that's under the 1099 they could have questions so if you got a schedule C at the end of the year and let's imagine this was for an entire year that was saying 20171 <clears throat> then you would just say okay well I'll just take the difference and uh, and I'll increase my my top line revenue and and then I'll record the other side to like fees or something like that so we could do a journal entry so this would be like the easiest thing to do we're making a lot of assumptions here but we could just then go okay let's go and make a journal entry as of uh 08 <clears throat> let's say 30 to five and we're going to say that this is going to be an expense account which is going to be uh what do we want to call it amazon charges amazon charges i'll just make up an expense account you can put it in the cost of goods sold uh if you want i'm just going to put it in the expense for now uh so so you you could put it into cost goods sold though but i'm going to say let's say other business amazon charges and we're going to say that was for 209.83 209.83 and the other side is going to go into the amazon sales sales amazon so this will increase the amazon sales with a credit because it goes up with a credit and the Amazon charges will be an expense account, which you could put into cost of goods sold. And I'll save and close and back to the income statement. And so now we've just basically said, okay, that should tie out to my 1099. So the IRS is happy. And, and then I'm just assuming that the difference was charges of some kind that I lumped into charges. And then down here, we've got the net income, which basically is the same in either case. So we just adjusted it to get the top line to, to match what is being reported as sales, assuming that that is the correct thing to do. That would be the easiest thing to do, but you don't get a lot of detail in terms of what the actual charges were. And that's not ideal, especially for internal bookkeeping purposes. Also, if you had sales tax that you needed to track, then uh, you're gonna have to come up with some way to do that. Although with the Amazon, situation amazon might be responsible for a lot more of the sales tax situations than if you were in a shopify kind of situation now the next method is we can say okay i'm going to pull this information in and enter a journal entry according to this whole detail that i pulled in every two weeks that i'm going to pull in related to the deposits and it's summarizing multiple sales so it's not like i'm pulling in every transaction but i'm going to take my deposit detail and, and try to get my financial statements to have more information. So then I'm going to enter a transaction that looks more like this. So let's pull this in, in and do that method. So I'm going to go back on over and we'll do this on uh, 9-1. So now I'm going to enter a journal entry. So we're going to do the same thing again with a different method this time to tie out to this deposit. So we'll say let's enter a journal entry. And I'm just going to go through each of these line items on and I'm going to going to make up an account for it to go to. So each of these line items, we did this in a prior presentation. We decided that all of these items that make up that deposit is going to be going into these accounts. So if I don't have these accounts, I will make them up as I go. So we've got Amazon charges. So Amazon, Amazon charges let's do that this is going to be as of by the way 09 let's say 30 to 5 and that's going to be 90 26 9 0 0.26 and then we've got amazon charges a couple more times so we'll say amazon charges again this is going to be 16 on the credit 16 was that even steven and then again that's not amazon charges 
Okay, the heck, Paso. Amazon. Amazon. And charges. Amazon charges. All right. Don't be messing up like that. Amazon charges. Again. And this one's going to go to 17. Do I really have to deal with these pennies? Crying out loud. All right. Then we're on Amazon uh, FBA fees. All right. Amazon on FBA fees. I'm going to say tab and I'm going to set that up again. We could put it in a cost of goods sold account or an expense account. I'm just going to expense them for now. Uh, it's you know, so I won't get into the details on that. And, and we'll look at the custom where like the integration for for Amazon within QuickBooks automatically sets up the accounts later and I think they put it to uh, cost of goods sold so and we'll take a look at that later but I'm just going to put it into other expense there it is boom and that's going to be for uh, $87 87 and then we're going to say that we're on Amazon sales all right Amazon sales boom oh hold on a second don't i have a sale sales amazon there we go and that one is for that should be a credit it's going to be for amazon uh 701 all right 701 so it's quite of a tedious activity to do this but amazon refunds all right amazon Amazon refunds. All right, let's add it. I'm going to say it's going to be an income account because this is going to be a contra income account for the refunds that come back to us. So I'm going to say other primary income, Amazon refunds. And that was for 99.88. So 99.88, is that right? 98, 98. Pick it up correctly. All right, and the next one is seller uh, fees and charges again. All right, so I'm gonna say Amazon charges, and that one, $3. They're just nitpicking me. Nickel and diamond, nickel and diamond me to death. Just like the IRS does. Amazon. Amazon charges. Amazon charges 108. All right, 1.08. Okay, and then we've got Amazon shipping income. Amazon shipping income. I'll make up an account. It's going to be an income type of account because this is what we're charging for the shipping. We're collecting the shipping. In this case, I'm going to say other income, Amazon shipping, boom, shaka laka, $21, $21. And then we got Amazon shipping again. So ultra base, Amazon shipping income. And this one is 11 on the debit side, 11 something 1144 i can't remember four numbers 1133 1133 amazon shipping again i should be able to rem remember seven numbers at a time isn't that what the memories amazon shipping you're supposed to be able to remember that's why the phone numbers are that long you can't even remember 939 9.3 oh hold on a sec 9.39 all right, and then we've got Amazon sales tax payable. All right, Amazon sales tax payable. I'll add that, that's gonna be a liability because these are gonna be the sales taxes that we uh, are getting paid that we're probably gonna have to remit to the government, remembering that I'm gonna say other current liabilities 
that Amazon is possibly more gonna gonna handle more of the sales tax than like a Shopify sometimes maybe, but some states you might still have to deal with the sales tax. So that's a whole nother issue that we might talk a little bit more about in the future. That's point two. It's not bad. I can handle that, but still they're nickel and dime in me, man. Nickel and dime in me. Amazon FBA fees. So we've got then Amazon FBA fees. 6311. 6311. And then we've got Amazon sales tax payable again. All right. Amazon sales tax payable. That's usually a liability, but yeah, $24. 24. And then we've got the Amazon sales tax payable again. Amazon sales tax payable for $5. And then finally, if it all comes out correctly, notice it's it's trying to give me the number sometimes. This is gonna be Amazon. I'm gonna put it into an Amazon Amazon payment clearing account. Boom. And that's gonna be an other current liability account other current um, i'm sorry other current asset account and i'm gonna say it's gonna be just i'll just put it other current asset don't give me the, and there we go and now it, now if i did everything correctly it's gonna try to plug that number in for me to make my debits and credits correct so if i my debits and credits should be correct 931.88 so 931.88 so it's a long tedious process to do the journal entry with the amazon ones oftentimes because again the reports that you have to deal with often have a whole lot of line items and as we saw in the prior presentation in the excel problem we can group multiple line items into some of these line items and again the software that's what some of the software integrations are attempting to do when they pull in the data from a third-party platform such as even the quickbooks integration it's not trying to pull in every customer sale but summarizing the data which means it's going to pull it in in like a journal entry format uh generally and if you get this in there all correctly then the bottom line should still add up to the amount that amazon's going to be distributing the deposit that's going to hit the bank account now note that we put this this amount not into our checking account but rather into a clearing account it should be exact so we could have put it like into our checking account uh even though we if we were to do that we might want to use like a deposit form and we can put this whole long journal entry into a deposit form and then when you do the bank feeds it could match you could use the matching mechanism to match out the bank feeds to what you put in there but the clearing accounts are often a good system in case there's an issue and this amount doesn't exactly tie out for whatever reason to what was put in to the bank account so that you could see something in the clearing account that doesn't clear because we should be able to tick and tie everything out in the clearing account hopefully i got all the account uh types correct you could uh put put some of these items in a cost of goods sold as opposed to an expense item like we talked about and we'll see some of the again the default settings that quickbooks uses when we use the quickbooks integration at least for the shopify uh side of things so you can get get an idea of what their defaults are and i think they do use cost of goods sold for some of the uh fees and whatnot all right uh so let's go ahead and save it and close it so i'll save it and close it and I probably, I should have put the date on the date of the deposit profits possibly, or the date that it was sent out, uh, which should be, let's just, what did I put on? <laughs> I think I put, I think I put 915 or something like that, or 925, might be a little bit more specific. Okay, save it and close it. And then if I go to my balance sheet and we bring the date up, now we're working in the next months, 09, 01, uh, 25 to 09, 31, 25. Let's run this side by side, month by month now. And to, hold on a sec, 09, 30, 25. And let's run it there, okay. All right, so then, and now I wanna see it month by month. Let's make it from 08, 01. Two, five, so I can see the two months. Okay, so this is as of the end of August, as of the end of September. If I go into 
And now I'm not going into the checking account. It's not there yet. It's in the, it should be in the clearing account. Clearing account, clearing account. There it is, pull it together for crying out loud. So there's our clearing account. And then when we make the deposit, it's gonna move from here up into uh, the checking account. And this is similar to what some of the integrations will do that we'll take a look at in a future presentation. And then on the income statement side, let's do the same thing. Let's just bring this up to 09325. And then let's say this is gonna be for, uh, for months. So I can see the months side by side. So now we've got our, our Amazon uh, income and refunds. So here's our Amazon income. And then the refunds are usually considered kind of contra income accounts. We put them in the income section. It would be nice if it was in the other order and you could order it with like account numbers, for example, and whatnot, or you could use like Z to A ordering. I won't get into that now, but there's our, our uh, total income. And then we've got the gross profit and then we've got the charges and the Amazon uh, FBA fees. And again, you might put these into like cost to get sold as opposed to down here. But the general idea is that there are our expenses. We've got the more breakout of this information using this method than we did with the prior method. In the prior method, we, we kind of, we just entered the deposit and then we forced the deposit to be tied out to what we imagine the 1099 to be by then doing a journal entry, which we might do at the end of the year. If we use this method, we're going to be more accurate during the year, right? Because, because now we're breaking out each of the transactions as we go, instead of waiting like till the end of the year when we get a 1099 and then possibly make an, an adjustment at the end of the year, for example. Uh, so, and, and, uh, and here we also might have the sales tax. If I go to the balance sheet, if we deal with sales tax, then we've got the sales tax payable, which is a liability account. Now, then the final step of this method would be that we're going to see the deposit. And when the deposit hits the checking account, we will put the other side to the clearing account and the clearing account will then zero back out. So I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. And if we go into the checking account, we could say there's our deposit. We could say we can look at the detail in our clearing account and it should match exactly because there's no fee because we're connected directly to, to Amazon. It was paid out by Amazon. So if there's no other fees or anything, then from a third party platform like a PayPal or something, we should be able to go in here directly and see it. And I'm going to put the other side of this transaction to the Amazon clearing account, Amazon, Amazon clearing. What did I call it for crying out loud? I called it Amazon payment clearing account. Okay. Amazon payment clearing account. So there we go. And so this will decrease the checking account. And then the other side will bring the clearing account back to zero. Let's add it and then go to the balance sheet it's thinking awfully long balance sheet run the balance sheet and so now the clearing account is back down what we should see in the clearing accounts is is they go up and then they go back down to zero so we should be able to tick and tie these uh journal entries and then the transaction and if i go back up to the uh the the checking account it's going to go into the checking account so no, so that's how you could do it on a manual basis. Now, remember, we're in a future presentation, we'll take a look then at the QuickBooks method, which is which is using their commerce method down here, which is also similar to some third party apps, which also is trying to summarize the data as it as it pulls in that information into the QuickBooks system. So we're still going to have to deal with like clearing accounts and whatnot, even if we're using this kind of method, because we're trying not to pull in every single transaction from the third party platform, like an Amazon or Shopify. And so the integrations that most people recommend are the ones that are trying to do a similar thing, pull in the detailed information related to the payments and break that out. Uh, but have it done kind of automatically in the QuickBooks system, but you're still going to have to deal with the clearing accounts and basically have to understand what what it is doing. So we'll get into that more in future presentations.